This is One on One. We are pleased to be joined by our friend, Dr. James Whittick, who is Chief of Orthopedic Oncology at Hackensack University Medical Center. Good to see you, Doctor. Hi, Steve. You were telling me right before we got on the air, um, we're talking about uh, amputation and the incredible changes, the improvements that have been made. You said that compared to, say, the mid-late 1970s, maybe early 80s, compared to today, give me the statistic you gave me as it relates to saving limbs. So nowadays, compared to 20, 30 years ago, we can save about 95% of limbs or legs and arms. Um, whereas 20, 30 years ago, before, uh, before chemotherapy was really invented and uh, different limb sparing techniques were, were uh, really optimized, uh, almost everybody underwent an amputation. And it's just been a dramatic change over the last 20 to 30 years. So if someone has cancer it's in the bone, is that where it really? Yeah, in the okay. bone or in the soft tissues around the bone. Okay, so, so I actually said to you, because this is you know, the way I look at things, if you're, un if you're unfortunate, if, if it's gonna happen, and you're unfortunate enough to have it, your odds are better today than 20, 30 years ago. Oh, dramatically better. Really? You, know, you can uh, not only uh, save many more lives nowadays with uh, different chemotherapy regimens that were not available 20, 30 years ago, but you can also uh, dramatically improve the quality of their lives as they, as they live by saving their limbs and saving their arms and legs. Um, what's interesting to me is that you know, the, the psychology of, of all this. You, know, you say that it's very important that you shrink the tumor before the surgery. And I wasn't understanding that. You say, well, whatever the surgery is, like you shrink the tumor. I was like, well, why? Why would you do that? Why would you just go in and do what you have to do? Explain that to us. Well, many of the tumors that occur in the, in the legs or in the arms are, are pushed up against the blood vessels and the nerves. And uh, that often makes it difficult to save a leg or save an arm without, without shrinking it a little bit. So by giving a person, a uh, patient, preoperative chemotherapy or radiation, you actually kill the tumor. Uh, the body reacts against it, starts to heal once, that, once those cancer cells are dead and uh, shrinks it, which makes it much easier to save the soft tissue of the, of the leg or the arm and save the blood vessels and nerves, which are important for saving the extremity. When you got into this field, right? How many years ago was it? About 15 years ago. Just in those 15 years, what would you say the biggest improvement, advancement you've seen is? Well, I think the biggest advancements has really been in prosthetic reconstruction. Prosthetic reconstruction. Yeah, meaning um, different types of uh, bone and joint implants that are utilized to save the extremities. So you might think of a prosthetic uh, replacement as a total knee or a total hip replacement. That's what I thought you arthritis. meant. That's but not what you mean? No, these are special types of replacements used for cancer patients who need very big segments of their bone and their joint removed in order to save, save the limb uh, that has a cancer in it. So you might have a cancer of the lower part of the femur, the thigh bone, and it's grown, it's replaced a lot of the thigh bone, and you have to take out that thigh bone and also the joint and then reconstruct it in some way. And there's been various different types of prostheses that have been developed over the last 15 years and improved upon as time has gone on. That what does that mean, improved upon? So explain that what was versus what is. Well, initially, many of the prostheses were cemented into the bone, and now we have different coatings that we can put on the prostheses that actually allow the bone to incorporate into the prosthetic replacement, and the prosthetic replacement sort of become one with the bone. There's more durable metals, more durable uh, plastic components of the prostheses that make them last longer, and different designs mm -hmm. of them, because over the course of time, a prosthetic replacement can loosen, uh, sort of like... Um, sort of like a cat, uh, uh, filling in a tooth. It can, it can loosen, loosen over the course, course of time, yeah. And these are special techniques that were developed and the prosthesis adjusted to minimize those loosening rates. So you talk a lot about rehab time. being important after surgery. Talk about that. 
So you can do a fantastic surgery and have get the cancer out, save their limb, but you have to make the extremity work afterward. And you've done a lot of manipulation of the muscles and the bone and the joint during the surgery. So after the surgery, it's very important that you have a very structured rehabilitation or physical therapy program for patients to rebuild their muscles, regain their function, and, uh, and get on with a good quality of life. Thinking about a patient, <clears throat> doctor who has a recurring situation. They, they've got a recurrence of the cancer. And I know every case is different. So we, and when we, we do medical, uh, clinical uh, related subjects, we really watch ourselves generalizing, you know, because it's dangerous. But within those parameters, if you have a recurrence of the cancer, do you treat it very differently as it relates to the issues you're talking about? Uh, it can, it it depends on many different factors. It depends on the size of the recurrence, mm -hmm. its location. Um, in most instances with a single recurrence, if it's caught sort of in the nick of time, uh, you can remove it again and observe the area again and perhaps consider more radiation or more chemotherapy at that point in time. Uh, when something becomes multiply recurrent, often there's really no option other than doing an amputation. And finally, on the amputation issue, the emotional and psychological pieces connected to that are very real. Certainly. And, and that people need help in that area and you provide that. Certainly. Yeah, we have uh, different support groups and patients that we, we put in contact with. Many of our, our patients who require amputations, patients who've had very good outcomes with, with uh, very massive amputations and have, are leading a normal life also. And they're very encouraging and help uh, newer patients through the through the psychological process. But try to avoid that at all costs though, as we said. Yeah, I mean, unless it's absolutely necessary. And uh, you said, in how many years finally, doctor, you, you think that it, we may be able to eliminate, eliminate, not all, but close to all? Well, right now there's a big focus on identifying different pathways of the way tumors develop and cancers develop. And I'd say probably in the next decade, we're gonna have various different types of pills that a patient can take and we'll just turn off the cancer, shut it down and, and uh, make it disappear instead of requiring chemotherapy or requiring a major surgery. We can only hope you're right, Dr. James Whittick, mm -hmm. who is the Chief of Orthopedic Oncology at Hackensack University Medical Center. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Stay right there, we'll be right back mm -hmm. right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Investors Bank, Bloomfield College, PSE&G, Qualcare Inc., Johnson & Johnson, Choose New Jersey, and by Verizon Communications. Promotional support provided by NJ.com. Small news, big news, true Jersey. And by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.